Hello everyone, welcome back. I want to share with you guys a tip that I picked up from Dimitri, the designer of the ACSS reticle. And that is if you're if, if you're using your scope to range, range estimate, uh, favor closer versus further away. Okay. So most of the time when we go to the range and if we're gonna practice using the range estimating tools on our scope. What happens is we're using, let's say, a cutout silhouette of, of, of a man-sized target. Um, and, you know, that's not moving. So it's easy to line up your scope and, you know, to, to get your scope on it. Um, and it's, it's easy to get a, a good uh, measurement on a target that's not moving. Now, I did a video where I took the scope off of my rifle, right? And I took it uh, to an area where there were lots of people moving around. Uh, and what I found is that, you know, especially at 300, 400, 500 yards, you know, uh, people move around a lot. They're bopping up and down. So as you're trying to, you know, you know, use the, let's say, the height of a person to range estimate, um, what happens is most of the time, right, um, it's like, okay, he's at 300 yards. Maybe he's at 400 yards. It's hard to tell because his head keeps moving up and down. Or is he at 400 yards or is he at 500 yards? Hard to tell. So when you get out into the real world, right, take a scope off your rifle, uh, get out into the real world. I uh, recommend you go to a touristy area, right? Go to a tourist area uh, where people are typically taking pictures. You know, they got cameras. They got, you know, things that look like scopes, right, so that you can look through your scope at real people and you're not going to get unwanted attention because people are there taking pictures all day so if you go into an area like that with your scope and you're looking at people at three four five hundred yards you're going to find that most of the time right um you're going to be like okay it's he's either 300 or 400 yards I, I can't quite tell or he's at 400 yards or 500 yards now if you stay with it long enough eventually you'll, you'll get you'll he'll stay that person will stay stationary long enough so that you can get an accurate reading uh, however in the real world um, you, you know, that may not happen. You may not have that time. So you're going to have to uh, make the, you know, if you're in a combat type of situation, you have to uh, make a decision, right? Uh, and, and here's the thing. Uh, a lot of times, um, one of the things that I have found through combat sports is a lot of times a, um, a fast decision, a, a less perfect fast decision now is better than a perfect decision a few minutes later, right? Because sometimes you just gotta make, you know, sometimes you don't have that extra time, okay? So a lot of times you have to just take the less perfect, make the, or make the less perfect decision sooner rather than wait to make a more perfect decision, uh, you know, a few minutes later, okay? So, um, so as I was saying, if, if, if you have to range estimate and take a shot, you're better off range estimating to the closer right so the reason for that is because a lot of times when we when we're taking our shots we, you know we're aiming center mass but most guys favor most people favor high center mass like up here in the chest area so what happens is if you if, if you got a head that's you know a guy that's bopping around and you're like oh, maybe he's at 300 yards maybe he's at 400 yards right well if you're not sure whether it's 300 yards or 400 yards if you go with the 300 yards right and you put it here, well, if you were wrong, if he's actually at 400 yards, well, you're gonna end up taking a hip shot, right? The bullet's just gonna land a little bit lower. However, if you do the reverse, right? If you estimate 400 yards, right? And you put your, whatever, your bullet drop over here, right? Your crosshairs over here. Um, and he's, so if you're estimating 400 yards, but he's really 300 yards, the bullet's gonna go over his head, all right? Um, so, so that's why, for the way most of us usually line up our shots, which is usually high torso, uh, you're better off range. Or you're better off estimating a little bit closer, where you're gonna get a hit lower down over here, rather than range estimating a little bit further, where the shot is going to go over the head. Now, like I said, this is for most people that tend to uh, target the, the the high chest area. Okay, if you're one of those guys that likes to typically target people in the balls, okay. Yeah, I suppose the opposite is true for you, right? Because if you're that guy that targets people in the balls, yeah, if you're off, maybe your, your shot's gonna hit the ground. So I guess you would have to uh, range estimate, you know, further away. You would have to uh, estimate further away rather than closer, okay? But for most of the guys out there, most people out there that typically target the high chest area, uh, you want to favor closer 
versus farther away. So if you're off, right? So let's say I, you know, um, I'm range estimating and the guy's moving around and he's like, okay, he's either 400 yards or 500 yards. I, I can't quite tell, but I gotta take a shot right now. You know, if you go with the 400 yards and you're off, you get a hit the hip down here, okay? If you go, if you um, estimate 500 yards and he ends up being 400 yards, you're gonna be over his head, okay? So range estimate, you know, favor the closer versus further away. So I wanna show you guys just a uh, really quick a review of the, uh, most common range estimating tools out there. Now this is be, this is besides the uh, the range finder, right? Because a lot of people are like, oh, I'm just gonna use my electronic laser range finder. And I did a separate video on that. In fact, I'm gonna link a a a, a playlist in the comments below to a whole bunch of videos that I did on using scopes, uh, LPBOs, uh, which will include range estimating. And the problem uh, that I found when I went out into the real world with the laser range finder. You know, especially if you're looking at something that's at, you know, past, past 400 yards. Uh, what happens a lot of times, you know, you're getting readings, but you're not sure what you're getting readings of. Because a lot of times, like I did a video where you had like, you know, a, a bridge and an airplane. And, you know, there was like a, some distance between the two of them. But the rangefinder was just picking up the closer object rather than the one that was that I was trying to look at. Because as the laser goes out, it does have a bit of a spread. So that's one of the problems with using the laser uh, range finder. So look, look that video in the, in the playlist below. But uh, with the nice thing about using your scope to range estimate is you know exactly what you're looking at and whatever estimate you get, you know it's exactly of the thing that you're looking at, right? So uh, the ACSS system, right, uh, looks something like this. I believe that the Russians initially developed this and. Uh, Dimitri further developed this. So uh, basically you have something, you know, so that's your chevron, your circle. On both sides you have a scale that comes out here. There would also be a scale going on on that side. I um, only have this side over here. So you've got these lines here. So, so for example, if I line up my man and his foot goes here and his head goes up there, he's at 300 yards, right? Or if his foot goes there and his head goes there, He's at 600 yards, okay? Uh, now, let's say a lot of times, or quite often people are like standing behind something like a car or they're sitting down or whatever and you can only see him, let's say, from the belt up. Well, basically, you put his belt here and his head there and then you know he's at 400 yards, okay? So this is a really good way of, of, of range estimating somebody, okay? Now, uh, the other way that I, I really like is using the 65 MOA circle, right, of a red dot, right? And that's, that's another reason why all optics all red dots have to be a circle dot no more dot only all right that's basically obsolete you got to have a circle dot uh because with the 65 moa circle okay at 100 yards my man's going to stand head, uh foot here head up there okay at 200 yards foot's here head's going to be there okay at 300 yards right so if his foot's down here uh, he's going to come up to about there which is about three quarters of the way between the bottom and the circle okay uh, at 400 yards, he's going to come to about the halfway point between the bottom of the circle and the dot. So over here is going to be at 400 yards, right? Um, and then at at 500 yards, uh, he's going to be about from there to there. Uh, at 500 yards, it's really easy because he's going to be as tall as the little hash, right? So you got these four hashes here, these four little lines that are around the. Uh, that, you know, on, the, on the four corners of the four sides of the circle. Well, at 500 yards, you just line them up at the height of this little hash. So, that, so, that, so that's really easy. Okay. Um, and with the with the circle dot, the the bullet drop is easy. If you got a a 50 yard zero, right? So you got a 50 yard zero. Second zero is at 200 yards. So from from zero distance all the way out to 200 yards, you put your dot here. You're gonna get a hit. You'll either be four inches high or four inches low. Um, at 300 yards, what I do is I put the dot on his face, and then I'll drop the bullets into his chest, okay? Um, at uh, 400 yards, I'll put the dot on top of his head, right? So basically, I'll just put it on top of his head, and then I'll drop it into his chest. Uh, and at 500 yards, what I'll do is I'll take the distance from the belt to the top of the head, and basically move that up, and that's my holdover uh, at, at 500 yards, okay? So... Those, those holdovers work pretty good with a 5.56, five, right? Um, and it doesn't matter whether it's a 55 grain or 62 grain. It, the, the, you know, it's only going to be off by a little bit. Um, but you got to be able to know the distance, right? So you can use your 65 MOA circle. You know, you get familiar with this. 
all right so that you know that you know over there he's at 300 you know that's 200 yards 300 yards 400 yards and again 500 yards there but that's even easier to just use the height of the hasher uh he's going to match up perfectly to that and i've and i've actually tested this out uh by using taking a red dot right off my scope i took i removed the house on 510c which has a, the circle dot took it off the scope went out into a touristy area right where uh you know again it's not going to be odd if i'm pointing a camera like thing at people right because people are out there doing sightseeing and taking pictures so me being out there with a scope is not going to draw too much attention so i had the rangefinder in one hand the red dot here and i'm looking at people at the distance and basically i'm looking at 300 yards i, I got somebody with a, you know i identify somebody at 300 yards with the rangefinder i look through the scope and i you know commonly saw that that's how tall they were right 500 yards you know so that's how i know that this is still proof i actually went out into the real world and, and tested it myself okay so hope you guys enjoyed the video and again the the point of this video is like as people are moving around and bopping around you know it might be right if you're looking at somebody in your circle dot and they're moving you know their head's going to be going like okay fine you got 300 yards 400 yards there but their head's going to be going like this right so it's like it's going to be really hard to get a a clear reading right and this is something again i've ex i've seen it and experienced it in real life using this at real people moving around all right so if they're moving around like this go with the 300 yards or if they're down here and they're going like this right go with the 400 yards okay so so favor the closer distance if you're one of the guys that typically targets the high upper chest again if you're one of the guys that typically targets the balls uh, yeah, then you're going to have to do the opposite. Okay? So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Talk to you all soon.